Hi everyone, I am Vandana Sharma and today we are going to do class 11, Hornbill book chapter number 4, Landscape of the Soul. This chapter is written by Natalie Natrovre. Natalie Trovre is an art historian who came in limelight because of her translated work City of Gents, a book by William Dalrymple. She is the wife of Belgian ambassador to India. She has travelled various cities of the world with her husband. She holds a master's degree in history of art and archaeology from University of Belgium. The chapter is about the styles of painting in China and in Western countries. The chapter begins with the description of a painting that was made by Wu Dozi, Wu Dozi who was a painter in China. He is well known for his works. He was a wonderful painter and a wonderful ta old tale is told about the painter Wu Dozi who lived in 8th century. His last painting was a landscape. It was commissioned by the Tang Emperor Zhuan Zong to decorate a palace wall. So the Emperor, the Tang Emperor Zhuan Zong ordered Wu Dozi, a famous painter of China, to make a painting, a landscape for him to decorate his palace walls. The master had hidden his work behind a screen. Master means Wu Dozi had hidden his work behind a screen so that only the emperor would see it. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene, discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky, men on hilly paths, and birds in flight. The emperor kept on looking at the painting and he discovered too many things birds, trees, waterfalls, landscapes. The painter said, Look, sir, in this cave, at the foot of the mountain dwells a spirit, right? So there was a mountain according to the painter and at the foot of the mountain, there dwelled a spirit inside the cave. The painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened. And the painter said, the inside is splendid. Splendid means beautiful, magnificent, beyond anything words can be. So the painter said, that the cave inside is too luxurious, too magnificent and splendid that it is difficult to describe it in words. He says, please let me show your majesty the way. He asked the emperor that I will show you the way inside the cave and I will show you how the cave looks from inside. The painter entered the cave but the entrance closed behind him. As soon as the painter entered the cave, the cave closed inside him. And before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the wall. Not a trace of Wu Dozi's brush was left and the artist was never seen again in this world. So the painter clamped, the entrance to the cave opened the painter entered inside the cave and before the emperor could move or utter a single word, the painting vanished. And not only the painting vanished, but along with the painting, Wu Dozi's brush and he himself were never seen again in this world. Is this story believable? But such stories are very important in China's educational system. Such stories found a lot of references in the teachings of Chinese philosophers Zhuangzi and Confucius. Now contrast this story or another famous one about a painter who would not draw the eye of a dragon. He painted for fear it would fly out of the painting with an old story from my native Flanders that I find most representative of Western. Now, what is the meaning of Flanders? Flanders is a region in the southwestern part of the Low Countries that is now divided between Belgium, the provinces of East and West Flanders, that is Belgium, France, and Netherlands. 
it was a powerful medieval principality and the scene of prolonged fighting during the first world war so flanders basically you can understand it's a combination of the countries belgium france and netherlands so in the old story from flanders we find these most representative of western paintings coming to our next slide in 15th century antwerp antwerp you can see here antwerp is antwerp as you can see here antwerp is near belgium this is antwerp it shows another story of 15th century in 15th century a master blacksmith whose name was quinton metzis he fell in love with the painter's daughter the father would not accept a son in law in such a profession why because he was just a blacksmith a blacksmith a master blacksmith as he was so it was difficult for such a great painter to accept a blacksmith as his son in law so he would not accept a son in law in such a profession so quinton sneaked sneak means went inside without anybody's permission and knowledge into the painter's studio and painted a fly on his latest panel with such delicate realism that the master tried to swat it away before he realized what had happened so what quentin metzits did is he went into the painter's studio and on the latest painting the panel that he was making on it he painted a fly and he painted the fly with such delicate realism that it looked real when the master had a look on it and when he looked at it he thought it was a real fly and he tried to kill it quinton was immediately admitted as an apprentice into his studio so when the master realized that the painting uh, the fly was not a real one it was merely a painting he was so impressed that he took him quinton metzis as an assistant and later on he married his beloved and went on to become one of the famous painters of his age so what is the difference between these two stories in the chinese story the emperor commissions a painting and appreciates its outer appearance so he appreciates only the outer appearance of the painting but the going inside of the painter inside the cave shows that that the what bit what the painter painted it was not understood by the emperor emperor could only appreciate the outer appearance of the painting he could not understand what was going inside the cave and going inside the cave is the symbolic of the mind of the painter the emperor could not understand the mind of the painter the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work so the true meaning of his work was revealed to the emperor by the painter the emperor may rule over the territory he has conquered but only the artist knows the way within so an an emperor can rule over only on the physical territory he can rule cannot rule over the mind of the painter the painting the scenes the places described in the painting only belonged to the painter and these places or these emotions or these things what the painter depicted in the painting could not be conquered by a an emperor he says let me show the way the way is the dao in chinese language the word used for the word way is dao a word that means both the path or the method so the painter not only shows the path to the emperor but also shows the method how to understand his painting and the mysterious works of the universe as well the painting is gone but the artist has reached his goal beyond any material appearance a classical chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view as would a western figurative painting 
so the difference between a chinese and western painting is that in classical chinese landscape it is not meant to reproduce an actual view and it gives the liberty to the viewer to understand and look at the painting in his own pace and with his own mind whereas a western figurative painting focuses only on the realistic side the appearance of the painting should be as close as to the real object so the european painter wants you to borrow his eyes he does not want you to understand the painting and in your own manner at your own pace and he wants you to look at a particular landscape exactly as he saw it that is from a specific angle the chinese painter does not choose a single view point that means he does not want you to see the painting from the angle that he has painted it he want you to go inside it explore the things and understand whatever you feel like however you look at the painting with your own mind so his landscape is not a real one and you can enter it from any point and then travel in it the artist creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down then back again in a leisurely movement so it is the basic difference and this is even more true in the case of the horizontal scroll horizontal scroll as you can see here this picture depicts a horizontal scroll here in the, which the action of slowly opening one section of the painting then rolling it up to move on to the other when you roll it open one by one gradually the scene opens in front of your eyes and it adds a dimension of time which is unknown in any other form of painting so a horizontal scroll is when you open the scroll at your own speed slowly and slowly the painting undiscovers yours in your front of your eyes it unveils the painting in front of your eyes at your own pace and this is unknown in any other form of painting it also requires the active participation of the viewer so the viewer decides at what pace he will travel through the painting a participation which is physical as well as mental so the chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes so the basic difference is between chinese and western paintings that chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes he wants you to enter his mind the landscape is an inner one a spiritual and conceptual space now we can understand this through the meaning of shan shui shan shui that means literally mountain water so this concept is expressed as shan shui shan shui means shan means mountain and shui means water in chinese language which used together when we use these two words together that is mountain water which used together represent the word landscape so more than two elements of an image these two represent two complementary poles so the mountain and the water these mountain and the water these represent the two complementary poles that is reflecting the taoist view of the universe and what is the taoist view of view of the universe that is mountain is considered to be yang that is it is the reaching vertically towards heaven it is stable warm and dry in the sun while the water is yin it is horizontal and resting on the earth fluid moist and cool that means two are though opposite in nature opposite in features and characteristics but when the two opposites meet only then there is something new created the interaction of yin that is receptive yin which is the feminine aspect of universal energy and its counterpart yang that is active and masculine is of course a fundamental notion of universe so when you were a child you must have seen the first landscapes that you draw drew were of the mountains and waters so mountain represents the masculine aspect of the energy and the water represents the feminine aspect of energy and when the masculine and feminine aspects of universal energy interact with each other therefore the creation of the universe happens so this is the concept of shan shui that is mountain and water mountain which represents the masculine aspect of energy water represents the mas feminine aspect of energy mountain is yang 
and water is yin. When yang and yin interact with each other, this is the fundamental notion of Taoism. So what is often overlooked is an essential third element and the third element is the middle void where the interaction takes place. This can be compared with the yogic practice of pranayam. Pranayam that we do while we do the yoga. How do we do the pranayam? That is we inhale the breath in and we exhale the breath out. But pranayam does not happen when we are breathing in or exhaling. Pranayam Pranayam happens when we are retaining the breath. When we are holding our breath, that's the place where the pranayam happens. So the pranayam practice is breathing in, retaining and breathing out. That is the suspension of breath. When we are holding our breath between the process of inhaling and exhaling, the void where meditation occurs. So meditation occurs during that middle void between inhaling and exhaling the breath where the breath is suspended. The middle void is essential. Nothing can happen without it. So if you are inhaling and exhaling the breath but you are not retaining your breath inside, so the pranayam practice is not fruitful. So nothing can happen if you happen if you don't retain your breath. Hence the importance of the white unpainted space in Chinese landscape. So this Chinese white unpainted landscape is very important in Chinese paintings because the real white canvas, the blank white landscape, the white unpainted space is that middle void which gives you the real paintings. That means before the conception of the idea and after the final output of the painting the middle Chinese landscape which is the white unpainted canvas that is where the void happens that is where the interaction of the idea and the output comes into being and this is also where man finds a fundamental role in that space between heaven and earth he becomes the conduit of communication between both the poles of the what is the meaning of this word conduit? Conduit is a channel for conveying water or other fluid. That is a tube or something through which uh, water goes or it flows. So that is human being also plays the same role between heaven and earth which is played by the middle void in pranayam. So that is why human being is also very important in this scene. Now getting inside outsider art. Uh, what is outsider art? Outsider art is something new which was propounded by French painter Jean Dubuffet. He noted this concept art brute in 1940s. Now art brute is something that is related to the word brutal. Brutal means that is raw, that is not properly finished, that does not have the finesse. The art of the untrained visionary was of minority interest. So in 1940s, this art that was considered as art brute, that is the art of untrained visionary, art of such people who had not received any kind of training, who was untrained, it was of minority interest. Many people were not interested in this yonder. This yonder is described as the art of those who have no right to be artists as they have received no formal training so because they have no formal training so that is why they don't have any right to be called artists but even then they show talent and artistic insight so their works are a stimulating contrast contrast means totally opposite to a lot of mainstream offerings the notion the idea of art brute or raw art was of works that were in their raw state as regards cultural and artistic influences means the art of such people who have not received any training for painting, any training for art and their art is still in the raw state. So this is called raw art or art root. Anything and everything that is from a teen to a sink to a broken down car that could be a material for a work of art. That means not only the painting, the colors, brush, the landscapes that are made with the help of colors and brushes, but anything that is created is a is the, an example of art boot when it is created with the help of 
any raw material any unwanted waste material it could be material of team it could be a sink it could be a broken down car anything can be used by for this type of art so this something nakchand has taken this to to the dizzying heights so nakchand has taken this to the great global heights through his works that we use that we see in the rock garden in chandigarh around the time du buffet was propounding his concept in india an untutored genius that untutored genius was nakchand and he was creating a paradise that paradise is the rock garden you all must have been to call rock garden and must have enjoyed its beauty and the creativity that you can see here and this is the finest example of art brute or raw art its 80 year old creator that is nakchand is now hailed as india's biggest contributor to outsider art the 50th issue spring 2005 of the magazine raw vision that is a uk based magazine has pioneer in outsider art publications and it features nakchand and his raw garden sculpture that is women by the waterfall so this is his a uh, creation that is women by the waterfall this you must have seen when you must have visited the raw garden and they have featured this painting this women by the waterfall creation by nakchand in their spring 2005 issue of their uk based magazine that is raw vision so that is the difference between the chinese and western style of paintings that you learn in this video and the importance of art brute the importance of the fundamental notion of taoism the importance of pranayams middle void and everything related to it so thank you for watching the video